Super Pussycat, formerly Superman. Okay, it's here, the pinnacle. We can all go home now. Greetings, comic lovers, and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Catwoman, the well-known feline femme fatale from the Batman universe. But did you know that she was actually placed on hiatus for a period of 12 years? That's right, from 1954 to 1966, there was no Catwoman to be found. Why? Comics code. The morality policing of the time, which still continues in various forms. It's just not an actual list that you can read, that we know of. Well, the past one did not allow for Catwoman for a couple of reasons. The sensualness, the undercurrents of deviance. But while the code would be revised in 1971 and some things would be changed, and while people had already been finding ways to subvert the code or work around it, and some people were slipping things in, Catwoman would reappear early, or well, earlier than some may expect. This thanks to the 60s Batman TV series, which very heavily featured Catwoman, and she was quite popular, and in this period DC was leaning heavily into cross-promotional horizontal marketing. They had done a timed co-launch of Batgirl Barbara Gordon. So miss out on Catwoman's popularity? I think not. They're just gonna have to tone her down a tiny bit to adhere to the code. They gave her a big cumbersome cape, but where did she return, and how? Also the alliteration is just flowing this episode. Getting into the Silver Age. Well Catwoman returned in what is secretly the best comic of all time. That's right, you know, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. That's right, Lois gives us their turn of Catwoman. In a bonkers story that is actually one of the stronger for Lois, it's one of her less marriage-crazed entries, which is saying something for this series. Catwoman is also very competent in this. They're not sexualizing her quite as hard. They'll get back to that later. Also, Superman gets turned into a cat. And who doesn't love that? Clark, Clark doesn't love that. I'm Sasha and I almost forgot to introduce myself. Please do the YouTube things if you're enjoying this content. Like, subscribe, and join us in this comic book journey. Catwoman returns in Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane issue 70 from 1966 and it was written by Leo Dorfman with art by if you've been following this playlist for a while you're ready Kurt Schaffenberger. Side note there is a biography on him called Hero Gets Girl and I'm dying to read it but it's a bit pricey maybe someday I'll treat myself. I'm very invested in the lore surrounding Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane I just need to know everything. I need to go deeper and that includes the life of Kurt Schaffenberger. This story is The Catwoman because you can't forget the determiner The Catwoman's Black Magic and the cover Oh boy, Lois and Selina having a cat fight right there, hair pulling and all. Lois's heel is coming off, and look, Super Cat is in a kryptonite cage. Special guest villain, the Penguin. Oh wow, said the small but passionate Penguin fan base. Well, I guess it's bigger now, thanks to Gotham. Oh wow, said the medium-sized and very passionate Penguin fan base. This is one of those issues where the things on the cover and the teaser page actually happen, so get excited for that. Holy cats, who's this female fiend who's sicking her big cat buddies on poor and vulnerable Clark Kent? Poor invulnerable Clark Kent is my new favorite phrase. Oh no, someone just smashed a chair over poor invulnerable Clark Kent. His day is slightly worse and his suit is ruined. He was mildly inconvenienced. Is it the Catwoman, Julie Newmar from the TV show? Huh, <laughs> subtle. No, it's our own Lois. So why is a nice girl like her impersonating the queen of crime? Nice girl Lois. Okay, list narration box. You actually need to read the comics that you're commenting on. Nice girl Lois. You haven't been here. You haven't seen the things I've seen. Also, it's nice to see the Catwoman got promoted to queen of crime. So if she's the queen and the Joker is the prince, then who is the king? We open properly in a giant bird, which one of the passersby identifies as a rock from Arabian mythology and stomping a bunch of flyers over Metropolis. What excitement one must have living in Metropolis or Gotham. You see these giant things and you have to think, is it product placement or a death trap? You'll get to find out when the things hit the ground. This time it's a flyer from Harvey Hawks, millionaire and bird enthusiast. He just gave in to the last name. He had no other choice. He liked fish really, but he couldn't live that life. Announcing the grand opening of the Metropolis Bird Sanctuary, sponsored by Harvey Hawks. Oh look, in the fine print it says, please rob me penguin. And just then we learn that the penguin has escaped. Yes, the penguin, our most infamous jailbird, escaped by the use of a fiendishly clever trick, which he pulled at a party for the prison guard's children. Why are we having a party for the prison guard's children at the prison? And why are the prisoners the entertainers? There is so much that's gone wrong. I know the budget cuts are bad, but come on. I've read too many grim modern comics to even contemplate this. The darkness that I am seeing. The visions, atrocious. The penguin had some kind of trick hummingbird that hummed at a super high frequency and shattered the walls and bars of the prison. Guess all those kids are deaf now and injured from falling rocks, but we're not gonna hear about them again. Just put them out of your mind. This is page one stuff. So long, Lois. I'm heading for the prison to interview the witnesses and get some pictures. Ha, no. He's gonna go help Batman look for the penguin. I guess Perry's running another Jimmy Puff piece on page one. Lois, who is not Superman crazed this issue, instead decides to do some reporting. She figures that of course Penguin is gonna hit this bird sanctuary and so goes to investigate. The Watchman is asleep. Hmm. 
While he was napping, the penguin could have slipped past him. I'll go inside and check. You'd think an eccentric bird millionaire would hire better security. Or at least make them dress in some kind of elaborate bird costume. Or hire people with bird names. Just something. Inside, Lois sees all kinds of birds and figures this has to be where the penguin will strike. And she sees a shadow of an umbrella and then a bird drops an egg that's a gas bomb and it knocks her out. But once she awakens, she finds that all the birds have been replaced by cats. Big jungle cats. Rawr. Couldn't find my cat shirt for this. I was very sad. Well, I'll be. Someone left some food for me. Just as if I were a prisoner in a cell. I am hungry, so I might as well eat it. Lois is mentally cataloging her kidnapping. She's ranking them. Kidnap tier list. Cat cage was bizarre, but the food was okay. C rank. But before she can actually get the food, she's attacked by a tiger. Hello, Miss Lane. Raja and I were playing a little cat and mouse game with you. Not every tiger has to be called Raja. This has been a PSA from Casually Comics. Name your tigers other things. It turns out that Catwoman is setting up a very elaborate ruse. And also that her henchmen have costumes that make me smile. Look at that turtleneck with the cat mask. They do look comfortable. She has Lois put on a Catwoman costume and then she hypnotizes her with a ring. This is to believe that she is Catwoman. Okay, that's nice and all, but I'd like to see some cartwheels or at least a circle of terror of some kind. For that joke to make sense, check out our Spellbinder video. As the Countess of Crime, you'll use this cat kit, which contains your feline weapons, including a catarang, which is even more dangerous than Batman's batarang. I believe it. Look at how jagged that is. We're getting into Klingon territory. This Hypnosis is so effective that Lois is now able to handle the dangerous cats. Continuing this era's trend of villains having good relationships with their henchmen, Catwoman explains her plan to them. And that is, she's gonna get Lois to knock off the penguin, and then she's gonna take these rare birds and sell them, retire, and then when they arrest Lois, she's gonna get away scot-free. Now the penguin does eventually make his way over to the sanctuary, where he sees Catwoman and asks her to marry him. But Lois is not herself, so instead of a yes, he gets a catarang to the face, which sends him tumbling out the window. This is where he's captured by Superman, Batman, and Robin because Superman did also figure that the Penguin would come to the sanctuary, but it took him significantly longer to think that than Lois. Just saying. He just really wanted to skip work to hang out with Batman. Robin's contribution to this issue is laughing at the Penguin. Thank you very much, Robin. Superman, in a moment of pragmatism we don't often see in this comic, decides that he'll need to explain where he was. This is so Perry won't be suspicious. So he decides that since he's here, he might as well investigate so he has something to report. But inside, he sees Lois Catwoman, but he instantly pegs that something's not right, that's not the real Catwoman, because of her voice. And after that, a quick x-ray confirms it. Lois, what are you doing in that Catwoman costume? Uh, Lois, my name is Selina Kyle. I'm the Catwoman sworn enemy of Batman and Superman as well. I love that pause. Like, even she had to think of a reason for why she was going against Clark. Like, the hypnotism didn't cover it. She's like, also, Superman. Well, time for Clark to go into this cat pit. Into the cat pit. And there the cats are attacking him and they tear his clothes, revealing that Clark Kent is Superman. Say it's not so. But since Lois is in a hypnotic state, she'll probably forget all of this when she snaps out of it. Probably. And if not, Clark will deal with that. I do enjoy that this happens so often that he's not even worried about it. It's like all the times that Lex found out that Clark had powers on Smallville. Must be another Tuesday. Catwoman and her amazing Catmobile, and I'm not joking, I really like it, return to see what's happening. And she sees that Lois has captured Superman. Or so it seems. Then Superman just picks up the cats and flies away with them and says to Lois that he'll be back. And so Catwoman realizes that, oh, he knows that it's Lois and hypnotized. Maybe she can kind of switch this and work at her advantage. So Selina captures Lois, breaks the hypnosis, and decides that she's going to pretend to be Lois as Catwoman. Also, Lois doesn't remember pretending to be Catwoman. And that ends up not mattering at all, and things are about to go really off the rails. So remember how Clark had initially pegged that Lois wasn't Catwoman because of her voice. He has to listen to it often enough. He didn't even need any of the visual cues, like the fact that they have different length hair. Well, that's all gone now. He can't tell the difference. I came back for you, Lois. Don't you recognize me? I'm your friend. Superman. Superman? I'd recognize being friend zoned like that anywhere. I am Lois Lane. You could be right, Superman. Give me a super kiss. It might help restore my memory. He does. It doesn't work, obviously. Catwoman is really into it, though. Lois, didn't that kiss ring a bell? Didn't it stir up old memories? What? No, I mean, he kisses her sometimes, but not that often. He should do something awful to her, like pretend they're getting married or pretend to be some other man who wants to marry her and then rip that face mask off to reveal that it was him the whole time. That'll jog her memory. Jog's mine haunts me. The implications though, I see you, Comics Code approved. Maybe Lois needs a super 
Coleman asks Superman to fly her to her lair, which he does, hoping it will jog her memory. That makes a lot of sense. The logic has fallen apart, and it started off so well, it's very sad. Lois, who has put the Catwoman mask back on for reasons, manages to escape, and she sees Selina has left the cat car there. Lois decides that maybe she can infiltrate the gang and get them all captured, and huzzah, the Catmobile has an autopilot that just takes you right back there. Look at Catwoman's lair. How has anyone missed this? Catalog of crime. Yes, hello? I'd like to report a crime. Excessive punnery. All these wonderful cat weapons, but... Uh, I don't know how to use them, Superman. Psych! She's got a wand from Cersei and she uses it to turn Superman into a super cat. Cersei sure was causing a lot of problems for the super family in the early years. All this comet stuff and then Lois is a centaur, now he's a super cat. Also, if she says a spell in a rhyme, Superman must obey. So she makes him really docile and vows to make him a super cat of crime. Lois arrives, but Catwoman and her henchmen see it on the monitor and they unleash the cats. But Super Cat can't have that and he dives in to defend her, making this the second time in this issue that Superman has punched giant cats in the face. Thanks. For a man, I thought you might be Supergirl's super pet streaky, but he has golden fur. Oh my word, another logical conclusion. I can't take this roller coaster ride. Lois figures out that Superman has been transformed into a cat because he keeps licking the S on his chest, and then when she asks him to meow twice, he does. But he's under Catwoman's thrall thanks to this power of rhyme, and she puts him in a kryptonite cage, which she had for Streaky. But then she found out that Streaky wasn't from Krypton, but she kept it just in case because you never know. You know what? She was right, you see? And so for our final panel of this issue, it's the cover, except they're both in Catwoman's costume. My word, the cover was accurate, but didn't spoil the true details. I don't know what universe I'm in, and I don't know if I like it. Coming up, the cat fight of the century. That's a big claim. Let's see if issue 71 can live up to it. Issue 71 does not have Catwoman on the cover, and instead is teasing the second story in this. Just everything about this cover. I'm wearing the blindfold as you instructed, Mr. Blackmailer. Hush money, sweet Lois, or else. I don't know. This just sounds like it's the start of something else. The most par for the course thing about all of this is Superman having tricked her into thinking he's her blackmailer. Same creative team, let's do it. The start of this wraps up the cat fight of the century, and I have to say that I want my 12 cents back. Adjusted for inflation, I want my 98 cents back because it's very disappointing. This may be my favorite teaser, though. All my life, I've dreamed of having Superman eating out of my hand, but when it finally happens, it's only because he's been transformed into a super cat. People turning into cats and being taken care of by their love interests. A classic, and I'm not joking, for real, both in canon and fandom, this trope keeps popping up. Also, her whole life she dreamed of this. She came out the womb wanting to marry Superman. So the start of this is a recap that completely changes what happened last issue. In this recap, Lois shows up and Supercat is already in the kryptonite cage, so she never figures out on her own that it's Clark, she gets told. And then Catwoman threatens Lois with Cersei's wand, says she's gonna turn her into a mouse. And then Lois falls backwards, and then she's a mouse being fed to Superman, he's about to eat her, and then she wakes up. And Batman and Robin are there, and they're taking Catwoman away, and it turns out that Lois, when she saw the wand, she fell backwards into Catwoman's weapons, and one of them was a cataclysmic grenade that caused a whole bunch of seismic activity, and Batman and Robin saw it, and that's why they showed up. There was no cat fight. Nobody saw the super cat in the kryptonite cage, so Lois frees him, but she can't get the wand to work to change him back. They did not do good lair cleanup at all. There were just things left everywhere. Poor pussycat. I know how you must feel, but maybe the cat woman knows some other spell that can help you. I'll appeal to her. Woman to woman. I might find a soft spot in her heart. Please turn him back into Superman. I'll do anything you ask. Appealing woman to woman. Pretty please, 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 please. Catwoman says, sure, she'll do it if he'll break her out. And he just starts gnawing at the bars. And it's great because next scene we see that he's in his right mind. Basically, this is just, please don't leave me with Lois. I'll do anything. Lois, meow. Don't despair. Meow. I'll stay here with you, meow, meow, until we find a way to switch me back. I'm very impressed that this cat could type so much is happening. <laughs> Superman hangs out with Lois, but he hides when Batman shows up looking for him because he feels embarrassed. I mean, it's fair. The roasts from 60s Batman will be pretty severe. He does end up saving some pets as Super Cat, but the story kind of peters out here, like they're not sure how to keep it going. So all of a sudden, Lana just gets a mystic item. Yes, Lana. It's a cat's paw that grants wishes, not a monkey's paw. The cat's paw seems to not have any ill effects. And while she thinks about becoming a queen or super, when Lois shows up and tells what happens, she wishes Superman back into his human form. And Superman is all, Lana, how can I ever thank you for saving me from living with Lois because he does not thank her. Womp womp. What an adventure. We'll post more of it in a minute, but I have to tell you about the second story in this. You need to hear about the blackmail story because some gems happen. Magic happens. So Lois is being blackmailed and Clark can't find out why. He's stalking her trying to figure out what there is in her past that she's being blackmailed for. What bad thing did Lois do? How is she a bad girl? Now Lois is desperately paying these 
little extortions, and she's never seen her blackmailer. Only once he was masked, and then he asks her to meet him at a restaurant. Good evening, Miss Lane. I'm sure you recognize my voice. Well, this is me, her blackmailer. Hi. I know I sounded different on the phone. And what does Lois think of her blackmailer? Oh my goodness, he's handsome, debonair, and gentlemanly. Just the opposite of what I expected. Truly, it was the most gentlemanly of blackmailings. How dashing. Call me Roger, and I'll get right down to business. I don't want any more money. I want you. I've been crazy about you for years. That's why I blackmailed you. I know how much chicks dig that. So, for the final payoff, I want you to marry me. Why? <laughs> Quality content, 10 out of 10. I'm only partially joking. I love this. Lois actually says no, which is pretty impressive given her track record. Roger, that's his name, is one of the sleazier suitors though. Just listen to him, he uses way too many pet names. If, baby, you have no choice. How you like my pad, sweetheart? Okay, baby, shall we go out and say our I do's? Once the knot's tied, we can have a little celluloid fire. Now, of course, this is code era Lois, so she didn't do anything. She's not being blackmailed because of anything she did. It's not even her on this tape that he's playing or is offering to burn, baby. It's a tape of Superman looking like he's murdering a bunch of people. But there's an explanation for this as well. They were aliens and also condemned criminals and their planet thanked Superman for executing them. So by the code logic, everything is okay. It's all good. The people who died weren't human and deserved it, I guess. The end. Okay, so the return of Catwoman. It's really a mixed bag of a story. There was clearly care in crafting it and in trying to present Catwoman as cool, and she does come across well in it. She's devious and well-organized and has layered plans that while elaborate for the Silver Age are pretty well thought out and not ridiculous. Lois and Clark do their jobs in this one, and also the conclusions they come to make sense. They come across as intelligent. There's a fun pace and action, and it starts off with a cool ooh, who knows who is who identity porn, as they say in fandom plot. However, it does develop some massive plot holes midway through, and you could fix the plot hole so easily. I'm gonna do it right now. We've gotta deal with the Superman recognizing Lois by voice, but then not recognizing that it's Selena later. You can do this by having Clark initially recognize Lois by her hair, the length of it, and then do something with a mask, make it lead lined or something so we can't see through it. Then, when Catwoman shows up and wants to trick him, have her cut her hair, or have her put a wig on, some kind of cat wig that she had in her catmobile for reasons. I'm very invested this, this bothered me because it was all going so well. It had oomph and then it peered into a little tiny meow. I guess also we must admit that it did hinge on Lois arriving for the whole thing to work. I know it wasn't foolproof, but it was going places. Superman turning into a cat is zany fun. They don't do too much with it, but him being so desperate he would free Catwoman was worth the price of admission. It definitely works in getting Catwoman back into the universe. In retrospect, it looks kind of like stealth, kind of like, oh, we'll put her here and then if it does well and it tests well, we'll put her in the Batman universe. But there was was a time when Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane was one of the top selling comics. For a time period, it was in the top three. This book was legit. I will have it be remembered. I will acclaim it as awkward as it often is. I find the awkwardness amusing. Mileage varies. Hard. I know some find it just painful or problematic. The way they got the penguin into the story was suspect, but mostly just because of the horror of a prison guard's children's birthday party at the prison. Not the hummingbird of doom, that's fine. We're pro hummingbird of doom. There was no true cat fight, which is mildly disappointing, just for the lack of Superman as a cat having to watch a cat fight. I mean, in the Wonder Woman issue, we got a full fight, which was Superman amusedly watching an undercover Kryptonian beat the snot out of his girlfriend. Girlfriend in quotes. We covered that. Check it out if you missed it. So while this story doesn't have the best internal logic, the Catwoman story is fun. And it's one of the more action-oriented tales. Plus, it's fun to see the dynamic duo show up. It makes the whole universe feel more interconnected and bigger. Also, Super Cat plushy with detachable cape when... Sorry, Super Pussy Cat. As for the second story in issue 71, while not worthy of a whole episode on the Lois Lane Gets Married playlist, I just wanted you to know about it. Roger is the worst, and Lois is a journalist who would hush up if Superman started murdering people. Which is troubling, but for 60s Lois, hardly surprising. I'm more surprised that she didn't blackmail him. Like, she gets the tape and then tries to blackmail him into marrying her. I don't know, she knock Roger out with the tape. Take that, baby. So that was the return of Catwoman. Were you aware of her hiatus? Do you want to hear a bit more about it? Were you thrown off by the abrupt shift in this story? Are you a fan of people being trapped as cats? Fictionally, of course. What adventures would you have Super Pussycat go on? Let me know that and anything else down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this entire day I spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.